Hello everybody, welcome to Daddy Talks with today. I think we have one of the coolest venue we have ever had. We are in Dirty Bones in Soho. And you maybe hear the background noise. We are in the middle of the lunchtime here with the founder, Koki. So thanks for having me. No problem. And I like when we are at lunchtime and I have a cocktail in front of me. So before we start talking, what, what are we drinking? Uh, well, this this one here is the, the Mutt's Nuts, which is our our number one cocktail We've uh -huh. had on the menu ever since we launched and it's um it's woodford woodford Burb, woodford reserve bourbon and um, maple syrup and lemon okay uh, and it's beautifully balanced it's a little bit a nice uh, lunch cocktail sweet. what i'm having yeah and this one is called clementine this is actually new today uh, clementine guys a new yeah, one which has got a clementine uh, liqueur cheers and, and there's something cheers thanks for taking the time yeah, no problem on your website, in all the marketing material, it says New York inspired comfort food. What, what does it mean? Well, we, uh, it, uh, New York inspired because we, we, myself and my co founder, we always used to go to New York before we developed the concept. Yeah. Really to try and get the energy, a little bit of the, you know, to experience the energy. And, 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 and we found that the, the food scene over there was particularly emerging at the time. And we wanted to kind of, I guess, recreate some of that, bring it over to London. Some of that, that vibe, and, and 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 some of the food, kind of the ideas the, 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 that we we experience from those trips, and try and recreate it here in London, and and, and bring that energy and that 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 vibrancy over. I think in the last five six years, London's caught up massively. It's maybe even surpassed New York. Is probably I think it's surpassed. It's surpassed. But at the time, we were like, "Wow, this is incredible!" And I and I hope that we've managed to do that. And and and, and it's reflected in, in 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 the food and the design and and the music and and, and everything that we, we we do here. So but let me ask you: You went there with the with the clear mindset to bring something back or it just happened to you? Or well, with we, which mindset you traveled there? Well, he, my business partner was in nightclubs at the time okay. and, I, and I was more in the pub background. I was like running pubs. And um, we, I guess we wanted to, to get into casual dining. So we, we wanted to, 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 to come upon an idea that, uh, and, and a concept. And I think it was just the natural, natural thing to go there for us. And, uh, and experience what, 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 what they were doing. So what inspired, it was like 2010, 2012? Uh, no, no, 2013. 13, yeah, yeah. So what inspired you most back then? Which was the, the concept, uh, what made you thinking? Oh, that's a good question. I think, uh, you know, places like the Standard, uh, the Standard Hotel, the Standard Grill, um, places like, I mean, all sorts of different concepts, but ev everything, for loads of stuff in the kind of like East Village. And, and stuff in Brooklyn, you know, Fetu Sal, things like that, the barbecue place. Um, even Sweet Chick, you know, who's now coming over to London was, you know, we were inspired by. And, and just, just the soundtrack and the, I guess the vibrancy in the service, you know, the kind of that American attitude to, to the service that was just so unique. I think um, what differentiates you most is like you don't, you're not just another premium burger concept. If you look on the menu, you have the ribs, you have the chicken. So you're not, obviously you have a great burger and, and we're gonna have that in a second hopefully, but 
what was your making like making the menu wider? Because I think back then there was already some premium uh, burger concepts in, in London. Yeah. Help me out, 2013, who was already around? Your honest burger, those guys were, were coming, were, were making. And you tried on purpose to make the menu wider? I think, yeah, I think, I think at, the, at the time, the, it wasn't, we, we actually didn't put a burger on the menu at the beginning. At the beginning, it was all about sort of hot dogs and it was all about sort of on the bone meats, where the Dirty Bones name came from. Um, and, and then we widened the menu to include burgers at the time, but maybe six, seven months into the journey. And then, and then obviously came the fried chicken and things like that, which, and the, the menu actually began to expand quite, quite dramatically. And then we thought, actually, then let's narrowed just it down. nail it down to just winners on the menu. Uh, dishes that just all sell. Um, so what parts. we find nowadays um, on the menu? What's the three bestseller? Well, I guess our, 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 our premium things are fried chicken, um, burgers, uh, and and then we have a few on the bone meats. You know, like I say, like a short rib, um, and we do actually we do some steak and things like that. But I think I think predominantly, like burgers, we've actually. I think ended up having one of the best burgers available in the market, even though the market's so competitive. And I think that it's become such a powerful seller for us because we have a good, a really good American surf burger. Very different from our competitors. It's two patties, American cheese. You know, it's, it's a different type hungry. of burger. Oh, that's the timing. Here we go. Oh la la. That looks nice. Okay, we put that in the middle. Thank you. Oh my God, guys! I hope I hope you see that all here, just to, to show you. Before. Zero calories. Obviously. Zero calories. <laughs> a, a, a light a light lunch on Friday. So this is the signature. Yeah. So we have so we've got a couple of different burgers on the menu. This is this is our Mac Daddy, which is a burger with short rib oh and macaroni God. cheese. Oh I guys, mean, it's one of our, look at that! One of our best sellers. I need to I need to try that before we talk. So, and, and then but we also have the classic serve, which I was talking about before, which is just a little less complicated. Uh, Alex, who sits here in the audience, asked uh, me to ask you, why, why are your burgers so goddamn good? He said, what, what do you make different? Um, I think, well, you've got to be obsessive about the patty. Oh my God. I mean, there needs to be, a, there needs to be fat content in the patty, otherwise the burger's too dry. So it's a balance between, you know, you choose which type of meat you, you're going to put into it, you know, and then, and then I think you've got to get the fat content right. And, and, and I think it's how you cook them as well. You want to cook them on the plancher, I think, which is on the, on, on the griddle where, you know, the, 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 so the fat, so it cooks in its own fat rather than the fat stripping through the grill and um, on a more conventional grill. But, but I, loads of people have loads of different techniques and I think they're, you know, everybody, has good reason to have their own techniques. And which and they meat are you something. using? Um, we use um, chuck um, and we use uh, four rib and, and, and like I think it's about 10% um, uh, fat in there as well. So it's a good balance. Um, and, and then, yeah, it all comes together. And like I said, two patties, always two patties in our burgers, three ounce. Um, so they're which is kind of the classic but this American one is serve. like with the macaroni and cheese it's just amazing well the macaroni cheese is, is made with telagio and um and it's very rich but i mean that's been very popular dish for us and it's been it's like our kind of iconic thing um and but, but like i said you can have a you can have a simple burger as well you don't have to have it. so with whom are you competing here in the market because i mean we're in london at the end we have everything here you just said probably london surpassed new york in terms of we have all kind of different burgers out there with great chicken concepts out there. In this environment, how you try to position? I mean, it's a great vibe, it's great food, but if you want to narrow it down in like one or two sentences, what, what is Dirty Bones about? Well, I think we have like, I guess like four principles about what Dirty Bones is all about. We have like, you know, the food, which is kind of, it's like, you know, nostalgic, it's fun, it's comfort food. Um, and the cocktails, we, we, have, we serve about sort of, you know, way over 20% of our sales as cocktails. Really? Yeah, so we, quite we're very much cocktail focused. And so that's a big part very of it. very good, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then um, the design. We try and bring forward a design 
that's luxurious. You know, all our all our bon- bonquettes are spring loaded rather than you know rather than flat form. You know, they're velvet. There's you know we, we try to make it nice surrounding food to, to eat in, but at an affordable price point. You know, it's twenty two pounds a head. You know, it's not. That's your average check. Yeah, that's our average check. So you're not. You know, I think there's that that l- luxury at affordable price is, is key. And then and then we have the music, the soundtrack, which is always sort of hip hop, soul, funk. At a level that's slightly higher than your other restaurants, you know, you can better hear, quality yeah. sound systems, and then of course the service. We we're trying to position our service that's better than our competitors and bring that kind of New York level of service across throughout the brand. And it's those four principles that make us unique. But essentially, we're an American concept, and we want to be the best American concept in the UK. I and mean, that's our goal. When I look. You are on the menu before you're charging 12 and a half percent service tax, and I think that's very important to share that information because at the end of the day, it allows you to really pay great uh, hourly rates and, and give yeah. back to, to have this kind of service. But for a fast cash, I mean, we all know that 12 and a half percent on kind of uh, sticks and sushi and, and high up, yeah. whatever affordable luxury, whatever they call it. Yeah. I think it's pretty unique, at least from my experience on a 20-ish average check to do that. What made you doing that? Was that controversial at the beginning or, or was um, it never a problem with your with your clientele? I mean, I don't think, I don't think it's unique in the sense that there are, I mean, there are some concepts that, 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 that only charge it on, on tables of six or more, say. Yeah. Um, for it not to be charged at all, I think is, um, is, 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 it's not that common. Um, But but we you know we, we want to be able to pay our team well we want to we want to pay them way over the London minimum wage which is sort of uh, approximately 10 or 11 quid um, and, and and I'm happy to say that our our wages and wages are only, you know over 10 50 an hour and it's um it's um it's something that I think is important because it enables us to you know if, if they're happy and they feel they're valued through from a monetary point of view they'll they'll give better service service to our guests but it's not just about money is it so about culture and, and that I think a big part is, is is I mean we look around here you have great service people and, and we also know the concept how you scout them what is like what's the the blueprint of, of what kind of people you, you try to get into into your concept and second besides paying them really good how you retain them because fluctuation we do a lot of these interviews everybody says people is the biggest issue first to get them and second to keep them yeah. so how you compete how you I, keep I them think, happy i think you know we, we need to have certainly on you need to have a good culture in the business you need to engender a good culture and, and we have a good sort of social social welfare calendar you know where guys get we, you know they have a, an opportunity to socialize at our expense with company parties and things like that and, and, and you know quarterly drinks and, and, and I think that's important but making it fun also that they're learning so we have a training and development person in the in the business so that they're constantly feeling that they're they're evolving and we always look to employ from within before we, we let them to, to, to yeah employ from externally to see if there are talent in the business provide that ladder for them to climb up and I hope that you know if they do a year with us or two years with us and they say they've worked as I don't know a, uh, a supervisor and assistant manager at Dirty Bones that they can go on and, and, and further their career with other other casual dining brands and, and that we've got a, a good name for ourselves um, and, and, and they can do that but in, in, in the back section it's a little tougher at the moment with the chef crisis um, there seems to be a, so a how severe you lack of chefs Well, again, I think it's very important that they're not just, it can be quite monotonous work in the kitchen. So they're, they're being, de- you know, they're being developed. We organize knife training course, or they can go on, or, you know, they can go and visit the suppliers, go to the butcher, see the butchery firsthand, and, uh, again, through social events as well, and just so they feel valued and they're not just coming in and doing a repetitive job every day. And they're in, there's some learning happening. Because you know it's, it's, it can be you know the menu changes three times a year. It's not like we're running. You're a, serving classics. 
you know, kind of local restaurant where it might change every every other day, where they're constantly being stimulated. So that's something to to be aware of. Um, but but no, generally we find we have a really great attrition rate, uh, and um, we're proud of it. And I think that that comes also yeah, comes from from the founders and, and the people in the managing the business being connected to the business and being present. In we talked business. about the food, and obviously you guys saw it. We talked about people. You, you touched it. I think at the beginning, but I want to reference back because at the intro, what we showed, we saw your very unique design. And you say now it's New Yorkish, but at the end of the day, it's very specific. Who helped you with the design? What was important for you? Um, how, how you see that? Because it's very, very unique. We, we've, uh, we've used various designers across the journey. Um, most famously, Lee Broom, mm -hmm. who's Young Designer of the Year, or El Decoration Young Designer of the Year a few times now, and he's, he's very successful. Uh, um, and he, you know, he helped us with a couple of our restaurants um, in the past and sort of set the benchmark. And then subsequently, we've worked with various other p designers who are very, very, you know, we really enjoy working with. And I think, um, but I think the design is, very much actually I must say uh, something that my business partner or co-founder is, is particularly has a particularly good eye but it's yeah and so he you know he, he kind of drives that um, side of it and, 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 uh, so you know six years on the market five restaurants uh, is it six six seven eight nine well it's actually, actually we opened in 2014 so, okay yeah. give me that year back I, I, it's I, quite I, important I, I, so me. one restaurant by year more or less <laughs> How do you see the brand? Does it live by being special and more a destination? How many of them you see in UK? How big is the white space by still keeping it unique? Or how big you want to grow it? What's well, your What's your vision? I think the consumer nowadays doesn't want a hundred site restaurant business anymore. You know, they don't want that kind of homogenized restaurant chain. You know, uh, not naming any names, but we've seen some some casualties recently. But um, you know, I think guests want more consumer centric organizations you know like uh, where where they're not where they feel like they're going somewhere unique and special and, and, and kind of owner operated kind of thing and I think um, I think to that effect we you know we, we we don't see we've got a slightly different strategy uh, that we're kind of holding our cards quite close to our chest because we're just in the in the in the in the, in the uh, just about to sort of release that strategy to the to our to the wider to to, to, to you know. But you still only two shareholders, or you got like financial partners already in? No, we it's, it's a private business, so we're privately run. There's, we have a we have a few shareholders, but but principally it's run by myself and my well principally by me, and then my business partner helps us sort of growth and strategy. And, and that kind of thing. He's a bit more of a seasoned businessman than me, so a little bit of mentorship. You know. How big is the the wish or the draw to bring that New York inspired comfort food back to the US? You have any? No, oh, what to get back? Any, well, like Hawksmoor. <laughs> any dream to, to do to that to, or? Um, not as yet. I mean, I'd love to do something. I think that this our concept would work really well in Amsterdam. I got the unicorn. Yes. Uh, good. I'm in. And, and I, I think that would be our, probably our take. Look, I think that we... we so also would work great in parts of Paris, I think. There's a very yeah. chic, trendy part of Paris, and, and this kind is missing. There's, I think Paris always underestimated how close the relationship to US is. Everybody thinks it's London, New York, but it's yeah. a lot of like Paris, New York, too. Yeah. So I think it would be fabulous for Paris, too. Well, so yeah. Lot, I think a lot I, of white space I still to think we, we did venture out of London and opened a site in Oxford. Which was a bit of a baptism of fire. I mean, it's it's been you know it's been great to do it, a great experience. But I th I think that there's lots of other areas in London that we can hit up. You know, like Covent Garden, Camden, and I think that's probably more on our our focus at the moment. But but certainly, you know, why can't Dirty Bones be? you know, 20, 30 restaurants um, between London and other major cities in the UK, I think easily. But, but but I don't think it's going to be sort of, you know, it may not be, we don't really have the ambitions to sort of draw it out too far. We're working on a, a slightly different strategy, which I think will be, will be Curious different too. variations of the, of the concept, which gives us some scalability um, in, 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 other, in, in other pivots, which Smart. is really exciting, um, because then that way we can be the big business that we're thinking to be. about franchising or you don't want to share we've got lots of franchise opportunities I can, I can, but um, and again you know, 
it's, the, the market is, is is such that we have to take a measured approach to growth, and we are, we're concentrating on growing at at a, at a rate that suits us at the moment. That's the focus. But the franchising thing is something that maybe in the future we we could explore. When you now look back at the first couple of years, obviously when you started, you had like a. I think if, uh, a gut feeling on how what will be easy, what will be difficult. You had a certain picture in your head. How will it be? What was the biggest deviation, positive and negative, to what you expected back then? What really worked out tremendously better than you ever thought, or easier? And what was like a real a real fuck up in the last couple of years? <laughs> I think. I think. I think at the time, in, in back in 2014, site acquisition was a lot harder than I anticipated. That was getting good sites, and the market was really hot at the time. So you needed, you were competing with with, with restaurant chains that had better, better, you know, more collateral or what have you. And I think that was a, that was a surprise. Um, now it's softened off, yes. and like everybody's chucking sites at you. Yeah. But of course, so it's all sort of secular. Um, and then I guess the chef, the chef crisis in London. You know, the, I don't know whether it was it was fueled by by the fact there was lot there's lots of players in the market. And it's quite saturated, or whether it's Brexit or what it is. But the chef situation is is very tough. It's very tough if you lose a good guy or girl to replace them. Um, and and so you know, I think we're paying more money than we ever have done in the kitchens. Um, don't show this video to any chefs, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no, we and um, I, I think, and then, and then, in terms of things that were easier um, than I anticipated, I don't think any of it's easy. To be honest, it's like if you're in this business but or any you, other you business, you chose the most competitive market. And you also chose a price point, what is pretty tough to fight with, and, uh, yeah. and, uh, and you need to be very, very. And I said, this is so many things that can go wrong when you run a restaurant. There's so many variables, and it's seven days a week, 20, you know, 24, 18 seven. or 16 hours a day, whatever it is. So it is, it is quite, it's quite a tough. It is a tough business. I often think to myself, if you can crack this business, maybe I can crack any business. But I haven't cracked this one yet, quite. So, but no. well, you're the right way. You mentioned before Brexit as a small company running a handful of sites. Are you prepared on that? Do you have a plan? Do you have a how you're gonna handle supply chain? How you're gonna handle shortage in the market? You just mentioned it will not get better. What's your What's think, your Brexit thoughts? Yeah, I think that. I mean, I, I don't think that as a small business, I'm not sure I've got a lot of time on my hands to start future proofing around Brexit. I've got you know to run the business, um, and, and perhaps the bigger businesses do have more uh, opportunity to do that. But I think I think there is a case of like we're just waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, the, we, we see cost of goods. Are you scared? No, no. no I see. A, I'm quite opportunistic around it because, the, the, uh, you know, I think I think the, the, the market is 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 changing. Where there's more, it's softening off. I think there's more opportunity. If you're well funded and you've got a good team and you've got a good concept, you can take advantage of that. And there's lots of hospitality brands that are doing amazingly well of which I'd like to put ourselves in, in that bucket. And that's because I think there are more sites coming mm. up. Than I think the chef issue is something to be wary of. But with Brexit, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm so bored of Brexit now that I've stopped really thinking about it. I think that's the general, <laughs> that's the general thing of what we heard. But we are feeling, you know, things are more expensive than they were cost of goods, certainly. Um, but, um, you know, it's still competitive. So I think some of the suppliers are having to mitigate costs um, and, and keep keep giving us good pricing. Otherwise, we just jump to another supplier. Um, but um, I, I, yeah, it's it's one of those. Things. I, I guess staffing is the biggest concern. So I hope that they make it easy for you know them to transition across to the new agreement, whatever that agreement might be. Let's hope. And I, yeah. Let's talk about love and food. First about food, then about love. You, you know that I always uh, yes, steal the this, Einstein thing. The Einstein thing. <laughs> So, people always want to know, and they always text, but I forget to ask. I say you meet so many people who have a clue about food and who eat all the day and scout, etc., and are well traveled. Favorite restaurant in the world? You haven't prepared me for these questions. No, by that the way. needs to be out of the favorite um, restaurant. My favorite restaurant 
I should answer this and just give you an answer, but I would have to, if I if I could yeah, categorize. Take your time. Take, would... take, uh, take, you can also categorize. The more you oh. give, the better. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some of the, my some of the restaurants that blown me away more than anywhere else. Places like classic Beaufanger in Paris, mm -hmm. for example. The classic bra uh, French brasserie is just it's incredible and it's steeped in history. Place. And it, you know, you just—it's just such an incredible experience. Um, and you know, then more more modern in, in, in terms of restaurants. Um, I mean, in, in London, oh, there's just so many. It's just it's difficult to, um, to to know where to start. But I guess um, you know, I, I really like lots of. I mean, I, I like I like Hawksmoor. Obviously, it's a great restaurant concept. And I really enjoy going there for steak, um, and, and I like uh, God, just so many. It's just who of the chains? If you go now, if you go a little bit more chainy, is there any chains you like? I'm big fan of I'm big fan of Honest Burger. Okay. I like I like the way that you know they've they've scaled the concept and uh, and they've got a great great management team. And I see that as a as a great business. Um, and you know I like. You know, I, there's just it's too, many. it's too many to just see. But when you go when you go for food tips, you always are, are obviously we're talking about London and New York. Black Lock, I really Black like Black Lock. Lock. I think they're gonna. I like it. Too. It's a great product, and I think you know they you know they, they've got scalable. three or four sites now, and I think it's very scalable. That's gonna be good. Um, you're I like very meat. You're very meat. I mean, this is all meat. meat no, meat no but I like you know I like I like the, what's happening with the poke. You yeah, know, the poke concept. I think there's that's quite interesting for like lunchtime and how that's sus. You know, disrupting the lunch very time. Very smart way to serve, actually. Yeah, and you put the scalable. expensive stuff on top. You have the, the cheap you stuff below. Really, and it's really very cool. fast. That's quite fun. Um, you know, I like cricket. I like. I like all these these, these, these the kind we're, of. We're, new we're, we're for food here. You have a lot, a lot of things to write. That are coming out. And then, in terms of food, you know, food, in, in what food? Are, I mean, I, I just. I kind of probably have a favourite restaurant for every food category, is the answer. In, in probably every city, major city that I've been to. So, so if you want the list, right, right Koki. If, somebody, often, if somebody wants to have, get inspired, I mean, ob the obvious choice is always London and New York, and obviously you got inspired by New York, and we just mentioned that probably London surpassed in terms of trend New York. What other cities you go for getting inspired? Is there another city where you say, I go there to, to feel some trends? Um, I'm looking forward to we, We're thinking about going to Tokyo. Yes, yeah. oh, I have a list for you in Tokyo. Oh, yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, big I, one. I haven't been to since I was a very uh, small, um, small guy. I go but there I'm, every year. It's yeah. really, really cool. So I'm, I'm hoping to, to go there because I really want to go to Chicago because mm -hmm. I hear that that's, that, that's meant, meant, to be, meant to be great. And then the big things are happening in, um, in uh, down at Nolo in New Orleans. Um, and, and I'd like to go and check out that kind of southern American food. Is a, a lot you know, of trips cornbread. ahead. A lot of trips ahead. Um, um, when you now look look back on the first couple of years, you also had a, a, a pub before. So you came from the industry, come also from the pub industry. I'm now seeing the the success because it is successful. It's a full house and great reviews and great followership on Instagram. Great reviews. How much of that is luck and how much of that is hard work? Uh, I think I think at the end of the day it always translates to hard work, whichever way you, you can be lucky at the beginning and get a bit of a break and then and then you know you get it, 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 you get big few boots and you open a couple more and then the hard work comes because they're not as successful as the first one. Or you can open one and it's not you know, you need to work at it. Um, but either way, running your own business is always hard work, you know. It, who's it, the C I can't remember his name, the CEO of um, Yahoo is it Yahoo or you might have to, I think it's actually a lady. Anyway, said that if you're not thinking about your business in the shower, you know, it's not going to be successful. And that kind of translates, it's like you've got it's to, a good. you've got to be, be obsess, obsessive. Um, and I think as soon as you lose that obsession, um, that it, you know, it'll start, that the shine will start to come off. Um, so I think hard work is very, don't go into business on your own unless you're prepared to work hard work on you. Seven days a week. Very much mm -hmm. true. As you are now like on, um, that's kind of advice I want to ask you because a lot of our viewers, obviously they're all hospitality geeks, but we know there's also a lot of people out there who are, run small business or have an idea to grow. Yeah. And now looking back, 
what kind of advice would you give somebody to start a hospitality business now? What, what would you be happy that somebody would have told you and your partner before you put down the money? Product, 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 product. That's, you know, it's, you've got to have a good product. Obsess about your product. Eat, you know, more, uh, like you said, I mean, if I could go back, I would have been more obsessive around that. But, and, and then the rest will follow. I think that there's some, some, sen some sense in that. Um, but also I think, um, you know, you've got to make sure you deliver great service and build a good culture in your organization. Um, uh, and that's important for, like I said, you know, staff attrition. Um, but the product is, is the key, isn't it? In, in probably many, that's applicable to many business. Product, product, product. Yeah, yeah. I'm also very happy and proud, guys. We work together with 30 pounds. We even created a ramekin, what was actually Coke's idea. I think it's the nicest ramekin we had. And actually, he pointed out, and that's why besides the product, we, we work together because it's also a, a Rochester brand. I want to get feedback from you because you saw a lot thankfully you believe in us and we work together but what what um, tip you're gonna give us for the journey obviously product 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 but what do you think it's important for our journey on the on the Curtis Brothers ketchup bench out there what would you what well, would don't you never compromise your product yeah I mean, uh, and you know don't forget the brand roots um, I guess um, because that's always people like the fact it's, it's you know it's, 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 it, when was it founded in 1960 1868 I mean that's particularly applicable for us because it's Rochester's in New York and I wanted to you know the product just is so delicious that we just thought if we're gonna serve try and serve the best burger you know the, the great best fries whatever we wanted to company it with your with, with the best possible ketchup we could um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I'm in a position to be advising you about business given, but... Um, we, we take every <laughs> advice because I think it's all about listening and exchange and I think that's the nice thing in our industry in general, in the hospitality industry, where people really exchange. I mean, when I worked back then for Vapiano and you meet your counterpart from pret a or, or Shake Shack or Vagamama or whatever, we all are we're all very friendly to each other. We, we share the mistakes, we share like where, where we watch up because at the end of the day the yes we're all competing about kind of the the stomach share but at the end of the day it's a very very friendly and great industry and also appreciate that you took the time here today no i'm a little bit sad that this got cold so guys we need to <laughs> we need to start eating so we cheer now cheers. thanks Koki, for taking the, the cocktails, time at least cheers. we do that thank you for that no and problem. guys see you soon thank you